Knowing that Mrs. Mallard was afflicted with a heart trouble, great care was taken to break to her as gently as possible the news of her husband's death. It was her sister Josephine who summoned her. Her husband's friend Richard was there too. It was he who had been in the newspaper office when news of the railroad disaster was received. She did not hear the story as many women have heard the same, with a paralyzed inability to accept its significance. She wept at once, with sudden, wild abandon. When the storm of grief had spent itself, she went away to her room alone. She would have no one follow her. Free. Free. Free body and soul. Free. 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 What are you doing, Louise? You'll make yourself ill. For heaven's sake, open the door. I am not making myself ill. No, I am drinking the very elixir of life from that open window. My fancy is running wild with the days ahead of me. Spring days, summer days, days that will be my own. Surely you must feel some grief. I know that I shall weep again. When I see Brettley's kind, tender hands folded in death, his face fixed, gray and dead. But I, but I see beyond that bitter moment, a long procession of years to come that will belong to me, absolutely. There will be no one to live for me. I will live for myself. No powerful will bending mine in blind persistence. It was out of the kindness of his own heart. A kind intention or a cruel intention makes the act seem no less a crime. Mrs. Mallard did not stop to ponder if it were or were not a monstrous joy that held her. I had loved him sometimes, sometimes not. But what could love, the unsolved mystery, count for in the face of Brentley Mallard had been far from the scene of the railroad accident and did not even know there had been one. When the doctor came, he said she had died of heart disease, of joy that kills. <laughs>